Hi everybody, I am going live with Mary Evelyn. View request, live. it's coming together. Um, so Mary Evelyn is about to join us. Thank you everyone for tuning in so far. Hello. We got it, hello, good morning. We figured it out, technology. Yay. <laughs> Are you good? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, um, maybe we have a little bit of a delay, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, thanks everyone. I have this who's, big shadow. Who's watching? That's okay. You look be beautiful. I just got out of the shower, so my hair is um, kind of wet. But my hair is a lost cause at this point. I'm, fi <laughs> I'm no. finally getting it cut tomorrow. So. Oh, I'm tomorrow! Really, yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. For that. Aww, I love that. Um, but so anyhow, if you're if you're watching this, if you came from my followers, this is Mary Evelyn. She is a super talented dog portrait artist, and she does all sorts of other things. But um, she has painted portraits of Lucy. Actually, let me let me grab the picture that you actually painted. <gasps> awesome. Good morning, everybody. Y'all join. I saw some waves. Hello, hello. Good morning. Okay. So, for example, I know there's a reflection because I have it in a picture frame. That's okay. But this is a beautiful painting that Mary Evelyn did of our dear Lucy. And um, so, we've collaborated on a bunch of things in the past. And um, she's been on my podcast, and we've done a lot of things together. And so, about a month ago, you might have seen I did a, another live and I painted this. <laughs> it does not Love look it. like that. <laughs> and and so, that's okay. That's okay. We all have to start somewhere. And so yes. I, I think, I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm imagining that you saw me paint this and you were like, oh, I could help you. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, I was like, well, I'm sure there's some guidance I could give. And if you wanted some insight. <laughs> yeah. Because not because not everybody not everybody has a good good painting experience their first time or I know that wasn't your first time I've seen your cute little dogs and they're adorable with the watercolor on the notepads and stuff um, but I know like paper makes a difference and I hope that you saw that the paper the paint the brushes everything changes the dynamic of what yeah. you're painting so you can see this was just like regular I just thought when I went. When I decided to get into watercolor painting, like last year or the year before, just for fun, just something mm -hmm. fun, because honestly, um, I was tired of like watching TV every night and I was just like, what else could I do that was like, keep me busy and keep me entertained, yeah. but it's not always staring at a screen. And I just went to the store and bought like what you would probably buy for your like second grade class. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is totally great place to start. And I think it's good yes. to start with like the really cheap stuff kind yes. of so that you can like yes. see if you even like it. Um, but then what I learned from you is there are so many places to go from there. So this was mm -hmm. the second one I did. Um, I love that. It it's such a unique of... expression. I love it. <laughs> well, what My happened husband was, does too. <laughs> what had happened was, um, so I, I guess I kind of breeze right over this, but you created an online class on Skillshare mm -hmm. of how to paint a chocolate lab. And yeah, um, this, this Lucy here, look, oh look y'all, <gasps> look how close Tori's is. Like, look how awesome that is. <laughs> I wanted to do a side by side. This is amazing. Yeah. Oh, I had oh, to, yeah. I had to grab it. Yeah, Yay! of course. That looks so y'all we did a really unique technique back here for this background and Tori nailed it. She is awesome because all you can do is just with practice get better and better at these little rosettes type things. You I can do whatever the, you want. I love you. Doing could the do little, little hearts. Yeah, oh that yeah, I cute. I want to see what you come up with, Tori, because in my mind when I sent you that little fluid masking thing, I was like, the possibilities. You could do polka dots, you could do stripes. You can do anything yeah. like with that. It's really fun. So, so Mary Evelyn sent me like a little painting kit, which was so fun. Um, there was this stuff called masking fluid, which is like mm -hmm. this rubbery 
glue stuff. Um, yeah, and you kind of like basically. squirt it, but it has a very, very fine pin point. And you kind of like squirt it around mm -hmm. and you let it dry, then you paint over it. And then it was really fun. You kind of like peel it off. It was like, if you like that kind of stuff, <laughs> then it was very fun. Um, yeah. And this is how it turned out. And you, I know that you did like an, a wash over top. But um, mm -hmm. on my painting, I ended up putting all these like little white dots kind of okay. like, in different yeah. places. And so yeah. I kind of thought it looked cool um, I love not, it. not doing the wash over it because the white and the white, it, the white here kind of played down the white in here because it's a little too bright. Gotcha. Um, yes. And, and I love, I love how it turned out. So um it's so good so, so you created this class um and it takes you through step by step you start off doing the eyes then you move on to the ears and it's just like so detailed and so great yeah i try to make it as easy to follow as possible and i i still torn on certain classes on whether they're beginner level or intermediate. I'd probably say intermediate, but honestly, I feel like you can take these classes as a beginner. Good morning, Angel. Sorry, I'm seeing people pop on. I want to, and if anyone has questions, y'all feel free to ask because we're here. Yeah. We're both here. We have someone who's taken a class as a student now, and then you've got the teacher. So if you have any questions about painting or if you've ever even thought about trying watercolor, um, just ask because that's part of what I love. And, and it's like, I think there's an appreciation to be had for starting with basic, pro you basic, you know, go from this supplies. To this. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, I mean, how amazing is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we watched your story last night and my husband, like, as it was like, you're going through each one, he was just like, wow. He's like, that's really good. I mean, he loves the other ones because they're very, very stylistic, which is fine. And I could even see the improvement in the fur and the depth. So you already had that before you even did the Lucy, uh, the official Lucy one. Um, but yeah, and everybody's going to take it their own way. I can give an entire workshop class in person, all the exact same colors, and every single student will have a different painting, meaning different tones. It, it's really very fascinating with watercolor, yeah. how you can interpret colors. Well, and I think given the same um... ones. <laughs> As, like since you have so much experience obviously like I was watching the class and you were able to like you just know how dark how to get things to be really dark or it yeah. seems like when you put it on like you know yeah. that it's gonna be dark and like kind yeah. of when I put it on I'm like it's a kind of a mystery <laughs> it um, kind of is because it can dry differently yeah. it really can and, um, and what's cool is like I ended up going back over so yes. many areas, like especially the yeah. eyebrows. I, I just, do all the time. Yeah, yeah, in doing like three different versions of these. So okay, so here's the one I did on my own. Yep. Um, here is after taking one class. Well, I, I went through the class one time, the first time. Yeah. And and why this one is like cut off is because I was like just messing around. I was like, I'm just gonna do this for like. 15 minutes I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the whole thing it. I'm just gonna play and then I ended up doing the entire <laughs> class and so that's why I was because I was just like I'm just gonna see what the, how the paints are because you sent me this like nice thick yep. like board um yep. I love and so that that's stuff. why it looks like that then this was my third attempt so um it. better definitely yes. better um and then this was the last one and so what I found in doing all of these that like it's it's just really subtle but like the difference of like how you shadow the eyebrows mm -hmm. and just like those little how the light hits the eye it really yes. makes a huge difference yes yeah so, I like your depth a lot going through a class kind of trying to like quickly go through you know how to get the eyebrows I like your depth on yours because if it's a commission piece, um, and I'm pretty happy with this, I'm not saying like there's anything wrong, but on a commission piece, I might go back. Like you said, you went back over it, we call it calling a glazing basically, or layers. Like I would go back and deepen it and go back and deepen it. Cause especially with black dogs, like if you have like a black lab or something or any type, getting a, a really deep black right off the bat 
is pretty difficult. So yeah. it it does it does take you have to build it up and build it up. Um, yeah. So I, I think went you got it figured out. I went back and was like in the in her mouth. Yes. Where it's like black yes. black. Um, I had yes. to darken that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you and the more you do pets, the more you're going to realize there's certain things that you have to do to like make them punch, you know, like you discovered, oh, I'm going to make obviously the mouth goes back deep, you know, it's a deep recessed space. So you've got to make it darker to give the illusion that it is 3D versus, yeah. you know, I think once you can start to understand values and tones, you're going to have the whole world to, you know, paint basically because you just no stopping you. <laughs> well, and I think that like now that I've painted this picture of Lucy, I could take a picture of Bert and I could yeah. follow your class and mm -hmm. I could paint a picture of Bert. I could take a picture yeah. of another dog and like, correct. you know, your class is how to paint a chocolate Labrador. But I think that like the eyes, the mouth, like it, a lot of it's going to be very similar. How you explain like the snout's always lighter than anything else. Yeah. That was yeah, major. Because it's in the forefront. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. If y'all have questions, hey, remember to feel free to ask. I see lots of people popping on. Y'all feel free to ask questions. And um, um, my favorite thing, like, I think that learning in person is great, but I love learning online because you can pause it. You can rewind it. You yes. can, like, go through things. Like, I've taken the class three times now. <laughs> Well, there's no, there's no pressure. Um, I've taken yeah. like a photography class years ago at like a Best Buy, you know, in, in person. I think it was like a two or three hour class. Well, how much information did I remember? Like I, I took a notepad, but it's like, oh, I've got to, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, I've got to remember everything. And by the time I keep thinking that over and over again, I'm like, wait, what did I just learn? Like, <laughs> I don't remember yeah. anything. Or like maybe you so focused down like unclearly and like even if you look back at your notes you like don't even know what they mean right exactly so i think that's great about skillshare or any online platform really um that you can watch something pause it process it because not everybody is learning at the same level i have to remind people and, and i don't say it often i don't say it i don't think in my skillshare classes but once you've painted close to i mean it's and, and including minis, like, cause you know, I've done hundreds of minis. I mean, once you've passed a, a thousand plus pet portraits, you, you have that, it's like a sport. You know, the timing, you know, yeah. you, and I don't know everything. I'm still learning. And don't, don't ever think that I know everything. Cause I don't, it's just the more that I do, I'm like, okay. So that's, that's the timing of that. Cause I, I've seen my friends or other students kind of get frustrated and they're like, well, why does it look like this? Or why does it look like that? And it's like, well, it's, it's a learned skill. And so anyway, I, I don't know. They say that... it takes like 10,000 hours to yeah. master or something. And I would exactly done 10,000 hours. <laughs> I, I would say I, I would like to break that down. I need to break that down. Cause my, my uncle would always say that he's a, uh, he's a golfer. And he yeah. would say, yeah, you practice so much to be able to get the swing and the power behind it. And it's the same thing with painting. I don't know if anybody ever thinks of it like that. I used to be a gymnast years ago. Year, yeah. I mean, years and years ago. I and, was too. When I was a kid, I did gymnastics. Uh, oh my gosh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I competed for just a little bit and then I so got I. old I enough to realize. Team. How old? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Oh, I was on the team. I quit when I was... Um, I think in fifth grade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I started really late. I was 12 when I started as a gymnast. I went until I was like 17. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then I, and then I coached for three years after that. Oh, yeah. Wow. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Which is why I love Zumba. I'm a Zumba instructor too. Yeah. So that's what keeps me sane between, you know, all the painting and sitting and painting. Yeah. So. I yeah. love it. But yeah. Um, but yes, it's, it's all about, you know, timing. And, and I would think even, and I, I guess maybe I should like write, write something about this or do a class just saying like, you know, if you want to give it an analogy, like building muscle, you know, for a sport, you're, you are building those brain muscles because it's, it's muscle retention, meaning it's, you're, you're doing stuff over and over again. And it just, it just is natural after, after doing it so long. Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, and, and it's then it's like translated. How you, how you hold the brush. Like I can see in your videos, yeah. you just have like muscle memory, like the right angle 
to have the tip yeah. and I'm like over here like <laughs> twisting around trying to get it <laughs> painting like, upside down yeah well in the next so I'm just gonna kind of plug I released a how to paint a golden retriever that's the next class so it's out it's up now we haven't done any i haven't done any plugs for it and it's actually leilani she's her and her sister are on instagram do you follow yes. leilani and kaya okay yes. yeah i probably follow them because of you so anyway i've worked with Brittany. we're working on product and so yeah. i painted leilani um and i actually stopped for kind of a moment just to show you up close on the camera do you see how like i slightly turn because i realized with some students asking questions i was like i really need to slow down for a second and explain that there's a reason behind and i'm glad you noticed that because there is a reason why i do hold the brush a certain way yeah. um you know as far as even just rolling it between fingers different it, it's crazy again like a sport it's it's yeah. all in timing you learn it but I did and I, and even on the chest hairs because you know golden retrievers have the beautiful like long chest hair I was like it's kind of like a Zorro like you know if you ever watch Zorro if anybody Everybody and there's a, a okay good yeah, yeah. The, the Z will just turn the Z sideways up and down that's oh. how I make little like fur marks it's just like little tiny Zorro Z's <laughs> so I don't know if I could like Right, so if I can like put it into context, kind of like with the the background, I think I mentioned like little C's, like just yeah. like make little C's and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So hopefully I'm I'm learning to explain things so that it kind of clicks with people and they go, oh, that's how it's supposed to be done. Because I could paint all day long. You could watch me paint from morning till evening and then go, what did she just do? I don't right. know what she just did. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I, I know. I could watch you do it and it would be like, it just magically happens, but you explain it really well. Um, and, and I like how the Skillshare class is like split up into eyes and nose, I think, yes. and then ears mm -hmm. and then like snout and then forehead and then chest. And like, mm -hmm. it's all separate. Um, right. and I think that it makes it so easy because like with watercolors, you have to work on stuff like where it's dry versus wet. So yes. you put the thought into that to help us. Yeah, so jumping around from, like you get this little download, you can print out and you can write notes. I've got some notes written down here, um, but basically we break it up into sections so that nothing is really ever touching. Um, Cause I know people get frustrated by that when they go, well, well, how do you get the watercolors not to be so muddy? Or how, why is it doing this? Well, I need to reiterate on my classes cause I forget when, until after I'm talking about it, that water has skin. And I think I'm, I've mentioned that a couple of times, but water has skin. So wherever that water is, your pigment can't go past it. It just, it can't. So water retention. I mean, I'm right. going to look it up one day and talk more like scientifically about it because <laughs> it's yeah. fascinating. It is. It really is fascinating with water and all the textures you can get. So, yeah. Well, and it's amazing. This is like, you know, probably, 10,000 year old art form <laughs> and right. and it's just it's interesting like it's still relevant it's still interesting yeah. and you can still do new things absolutely well and people talk about um everybody has an opinion on this so I'm gonna kind of broach this with, <laughs> in the art world is the idea of taking the outline and transferring it because you know you I sent you the outlined version yes. and which that's was really I do the same thing. very helpful. That's partially right? why it looks so good. <laughs> that's that's okay because proportions are correct. So I don't I don't hide that fact on Skillshare. I say, here's my outline. You can use graphite paper and a ballpoint pen. Um, now, obviously, I've even learned there. I have a particular way of transferring. I have I even have a particular way of how I give myself a guideline. Does that make sense? How I lay down all my lines. There's a reason I gave you so many lines on your outline or because it's the same as mine, but there's a reason it's, it's, it's a guide. So anyway, the debate is like, you know, certain people will say, well, you know, they consider it tracing. They consider it, you know, cheating. And I'm like, no, 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 no. First of all, you got, we're talking about the masters. You're talking about, you know, thousands of years ago, you know, these painters, they used very similar methods, like a yeah. pin. I think it's like a pin poke method or something where they yeah. put dots in their images and then transferred it onto 
you know, what they're yes. painting, whether it be. And now they can go back and like, <laughs> x-ray Da Vinci's right. paintings and they can see all this stuff. Right. So to me, I'm like, hey, we're just using the master's te techniques. We're not trying to like underhand anybody. Cause I think it's great. If you can freehand all day long, do it. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I wish I did, but I, you know, well, and I could, it would just take, I'd just be like, well, yeah, you'll get your portrait next month or two months from now. Cause that would be how behind I would yeah. be on everybody. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's just, um, it makes sense to just do it like in the, in the way that brings you the most joy. I mean, I yes. think like as, as dog people, that's something I always would talk about is like, live like a dog. Like if you love it, like go for it. But like, if you don't like it, then like walk the other I way. So, that. you know, do it in the way that makes you happy. Like think like a dog. Dogs don't make things harder for themselves because they think it's mm. going to impress somebody. <laughs> well, exactly. Who's to know, unless you blatantly say it, like we are, you know, I'm talking about here in the video, but who's to know? I mean, when somebody is commissioning me, they want it to look like their dog. They yeah. want it to look like their dog. So that's my goal or a person, even a portrait of a person. I'm like, it's got to look like them. Yeah. So I'm not going to try to mess that up. And oh man, I had a thought a second ago. And now, oh, cake baking. I yeah. equate it to cake baking. I love decorating. I do not like baking. Does that make sense? So yeah. I don't want to spend the time <laughs> baking the, you know, getting ready to be able to decorate. I just want to jump in and decorate. That's, yeah. that's how I, that's I how like, I view it. I like making things pretty, um, but they don't always taste really great. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, I gave up, I gave up cake decorating. I love having, I did it. having fun with it. Like for years, I was making a cake for Easter for my family like every year. And, and one year I did it really well. And I did like this peep cake where I, it was like oh my layers. God. And then there was like peeps that I had sliced up and put like in the middle layer. What? And then there was like the chicken peeps on top. And then I dyed coconut green to be the grass. Oh and my goodness. it was beautiful. And it was so wonderful the first year. But then the second year, it was so <laughs> sugary and sweet. <laughs> like no one could eat it. <laughs> but because I had gotten too into the decorations. <laughs> I mean, what can you say? Not everybody's a frosting person. <laughs> well, and that's okay. Very, very sugary. So they, yeah. I, I have to admit, I love peeps. I do too. I don't eat them anymore, but I do love them. <laughs> I don't know the last time I had one, but I do like them. I could go right. for one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, yeah, ask yourself, there's all kinds of things that are like, wait, yeah, I remember eating those, but I don't know when the last time, I don't know, being an adult, I guess we have to whatever i don't i don't i don't guilt myself over things no but still <laughs> i know we, I don't. well now like we know better we're like oh, well, i guess yes we we know how to we're gonna feel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now if i eat something or, with sugar and i'll be like well do i want my joints to hurt now <laughs> yeah or be exhausted that's what it comes to hour. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah sugar crash oh man it's crazy um, um well, nobody's really had any like, questions yeah. Tell everybody where they can find your class and how they can okay. take it for free, right? Yes, basically. And now, Tori, are you a, uh, I don't know what you call it technically, an ambassador or an influencer? Are you with partnered with Skillshare? I don't think so. You are. Yeah. Oh, you're not? Okay. I was thinking you were for some reason. I can send you, and this would be up to you. I can send you a link if you wanted to share with your followers um, a link, and they could click on to get a couple months for free when you sign up for a premium account. If anyone is interested, do mm -hmm. some hearts on here so we know if yeah, you would like that. Feel free. Um, you can cancel at any time. So I'm not trying to get you to cheat around the system, but you can cancel at any time. It's not a big deal. Uh, Skillshare.com. If you just want to go to Skillshare.com, or if you have Skillshare. I've found that some people have it already because you can learn, you can learn how to bake. You can learn how to make a cup of coffee. You can learn how to film. You can learn how to make a YouTube video. You can learn how to start your own business. It's amazing. Like there's, it's kind of mind blowing how many things are available on Skillshare. Yeah, so the I'm there. Yes. So I'm there and it's, uh, should just be Mary Evelyn Tucker. So Tucker is my last name. I know on Instagram, it's Mary Evelyn Studio Art. That's my business name. And then on Skillshare, it's just Mary Evelyn Tucker. And I've got, I think, 10, 10 videos up so far. Um, most are dog related. I have two that aren't a butterfly and a, 
a finch. I think it's I think it's a finch, purple finch. So, and then I'm gonna dive into um, I'm gonna say the the C word here. I'm gonna dive into the world of cats. <gasps> so we're gonna learn how to paint a cat nose and some cat eyes, and just like start to process you know that side of things because I I paint cats too. I know I don't share them very often, but I do get them. <laughs> so well, and they they've got a whole other unique side to them. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, last yeah. week was supposed to be Cat Week at Wear Wag Repeat, yes. and it got a little bit derailed. I did, a, I still put some of my posts up, but it got a little bit derailed. Um, and and it was just, it was really fun to see. I did a little bit of like digging, and I'll, I will post this eventually. But how many like dogs and cats there are who yes. live together and yes. get along and have really cute Instagram accounts and. Mm -hmm. um, one one of these days I'll have a makeup day for cat week <laughs> and I'll Aww. have to share all these because there's there's one there's a husky and then it's like this beaut it's like a beautiful white cat and they just take the most beautiful pictures mm. together so I'll have to share them I love that I followed an account with a corgi and a hamster <laughs> I don't I think it's ham 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 or something it was the most adorable thing I I think the I think I cannot remember what his name was I think I illustrated him. This was like way back when like we first met and I was just picking different accounts to illustrate that, yeah. that really like resonated with me. And uh, I think he's passed since then, but he had this little hamster and he would be in his little ball. And I'm like, it's kind of like Bolt, right? The little hamster, yeah. his little like sidekick. Yeah. Or I don't remember exactly, but it was kind of like that. And I'm just like, that's real life. That, what? That's so cute. <laughs> so. It was really cute. So I love seeing the different pairs. Hi, Vidal. Oh, good um, morning. Yeah, we can see your comments. So y'all feel free to ask questions if you have any. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks you guys for tuning in. So just if you missed the beginning, I wanted to show you the transformation that Mary Evelyn has facilitated. <laughs> this was my first watercolor painting of Lucy. And after going through her class three times, <laughs> this is my finished. Yo, look how look how close that is to the original yeah. i just this is like amazing. how crazy yeah it's awesome so it. um if you would like to learn how to paint lucy you could paint your own chocolate lab and like we said you could paint any dog you could paint if your dog is not a labrador that's right. totally fine um exactly are, are there certain breeds who you think would like closely you can can paint a basset yes. hound too this is yeah. cooper <laughs> Are there certain Coop -coop. breeds that you think would be like comparable breeds? Like if someone took the chocolate lab class, like would it also be good for? Oh yeah, like, any or, any or short birdies? hair. Okay. Mm, any any short hair dog really, because because Cooper is a very similar. Hey Grace, uh, is a similar texture as far as. Um, oh, I'm not sure how to explain it. Like there's the little tufts on the chest. Uh -huh. But other than that, there's not really like any wispy fur anywhere. It's all to do with texture and then yeah. the value depth. So that's so really like, it. And you know, same with Lucy. She's got the fluffy chest, but it's not overly exaggerated. Not like a golden retriever. Right. Or so like a, a longer hair. So like a Reiner would be good. Yep. Oh, yep. A pointer Absolutely. maybe. A beagle. A beagle yeah. is the same. Yeah. Beagle. I'm trying to think. Uh, Corgi is kind of in between, I think. It's like, yeah, because I did a Yorkie class. They're fluffy. And a, yeah, corgis are kind of fluffy. So they're kind of an in between. Um, I'm trying to think who, which I know there's so many. I mean, you know, uh, my dog Thea is very similar to Lucy as far as her texture. And I don't, I don't really have her. Well, I have her in a mini. There's Thea. So she's kind of a similar, uh, you know. Yeah. very short haired dog and um but yeah they can translate so same with the the basset hound the the yorkie i tried to that's when we started working on longer hair because i had some people going hey how do i paint this longer hair i'm like okay let's tackle that and then we have the golden retriever and i've had a request for a rottweiler which would actually be very similar to lucy and yeah uh, cooper as far as a texture goes because it's just was, not very I was gonna ask you too my sister um has a boxer and she loves boxers yeah and I think that would be interesting because very like, similar they're because they're like a snub nose dog yep. like their face yep. their snub doesn't stick out as much so that'd be like interesting to work on yeah. the of them 
yeah, they're really fun to paint. And I had somebody ask me recently about their boxer and just realized I had, I've gotten back with them, but I hadn't heard back from them. And it was very, it was a beautiful dog, pretty chestnut color with the white oh, on yeah. it. Um, but yeah, you're right. Their nose is just, it's kind of like Frenchies too, yeah. with the squashed nose, which I love. I think it's great because they have the, the, the folds in their skin on their yeah. face, which is really fun. So as long as you can start viewing pictures in terms of, okay, here's where the dark goes and here's where the light goes. If you can start recognizing that, you can start translating it into any animal really. So yeah, cool. I'm a firm believer in that. <laughs> I love so, it, it's yeah. so fun. Well, um, yes, it is. if anyone has any other questions, I, I think we'll share this as like an IGTV or something somewhere. Oh, that'd be I know awesome. I'm going to do a few yeah. posts shortly here um, with a picture of Lucy next to her portrait that I took last night. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have any questions, you can DM both of us. We're here. Mm -hmm. um, and we would love I would love to see more portraits. And I know you would too. I know. I can't wait for people to post. I haven't had anybody. Um, actually, Tori, you need to upload your uh, finished project to our yes. our uh, discussions. Or I'm, I'm trying. I have it open here on my iPad. Oh yeah, share a project. So just go under discussions and then share your project so people can okay, see good. what I'm a wonderful job you did. Thing. Yeah, I've noticed, and I think you're you have the personality type you're just like i'm just gonna do it i don't care any you're well, not you're not intimidated and by minuses to that because like on the plus okay. side i i am like i'm just gonna dive in but on on the the minus to that is it like i never really practice anything so like this was very rare for me to go through four different ones to get to i this. wondered that was very very rare for me to do that i usually just dive in like you can kind of see back um over in my front room, I dyed this. Oh book. yeah, and I, yes. I don't know if I posted it on Instagram or not, but I like tie dyed it basically. I remember seeing it. And um, as I was doing it, the color was not what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> but that's because uh -oh. I never test anything. I just go for it. <laughs> you just go for it. Well, I've realized with a lot of students, they get very intimidated, and they're like, "What if I mess up?" And I'm like, "What if you mess up? What's gonna happen?" What are the mess up police gonna come get you or something? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like who's in charge of that? Nobody is going to judge you for, and I don't even know that there's mess up. I don't, I don't even like to use that terminology messed up. I just consider, I go with the Bob Ross mentality. It's a happy accident. Yeah. Like my dad would always say that if some, if he, he did something that wasn't necessarily in his line of thinking, he just turn it into something else. He was a watercolor artist and yeah. it's just, I don't, yeah, I don't, there's just certain logic I'm trying to like really implement to encourage people and go, okay, well just like you did, you, you practiced up until you got the bigger one. And I've told people I'm like, just, just practice, just relax. Cause I think people get caught up and they're like, okay, I have my eight by 10 paper and I have it sketched out, but I don't, I'm really scared to start. Okay. Well, why? So I want to start to understand, I'm sure there's resources out there. I just need to do a little bit of research. I want to yeah. start to answer that question. Why are people so intimidated or um, I'm not sure what the word is, but I've seen it time and time and time again since well, teaching on Skillshare. It's just like perfectionism. Like I yeah. um, am definitely a perfectionist in recovery. I used to be very obsessed with having everything perfectly exactly how I wanted it. Yeah. And <laughs> once you get over that, it just makes yeah. your life so much better. It's freeing and I had to learn that with watercolor and I think it, that's part of what's such why it's such a great medium because I did oils for the longest time. Well, you can erase an oil and start over again. You can just keep you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, but watercolor just allows you gives you opportunities along the way, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so and it, it you have to let go of things. You just have to. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I right. think it's good. I think it's good for mine. It's yep, yep. It is, and it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that's it's so instilled in us. I don't know if that's like a, if if social media because I was that way younger. It didn't matter about what I was on online or anything, but I think it's that idea of like seeing others because especially with because students will be like, "Well, I hope I didn't disappoint you," and I'm like, "You would never disappoint me, no, like yeah. ever." 
Like you wouldn't. I any just the fact that people sign up and just right. start is I think I think awesome. Right. It makes my day. Like I don't yeah. care what kind of progress you made. The fact that you that you tried. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, that's all I. I mean, that's my main goal. It's just to encourage people to lure and know that they're in a in an environment that at least I try with as a teacher to give positive feedback. Now, if they, I've, I've interacted with some students. Now I've built a relationship with where I will, I'll give them honest feedback. If that's what they want, they'll say, Hey, I don't want you to just be nice. Like, cause they're trying to improve their skill. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm like, no, I'm seeing improvement. I'm not going to tell you, like, I would never, I mean, I just would never tell anybody their, their work is, is not good. And I've met people that are trying to get over that because they were told that for so many years, whether it was by peers or friends or family. I have some right. friends that are like that. I'm like, why would anybody ever do that? And uh, so I'm just trying to create, it's just, it's been interesting anyway, because I know that I was that way. I'm like, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. And it has to look good the first time or I'm not gonna do it. And I'm like, what? where does that mentality come from? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> So first, first time didn't look good. <laughs> just, oh, it, it's just keep trying. It's got its own yeah. charm though. It does. No, it has its own I, charm. And I, I agree with you. I shouldn't be so hard on myself because um, right. it's not bad considering I just winged it and just went for it and just tried. Exactly. Yeah. Not to, you've got people that follow you that would look at that and go, well, gosh, I wish I could just wing that. There's yeah. always going to be somebody out there that's underneath that level that we think, oh man, well that just didn't turn out quite right. So I've learned not to do that with any of my stuff because there's people that are just like, I wish I could even get close to that. And I'm like, well, yeah. again, thousands of hours, like we talked yeah. about thousands of hours of practice. And even in a workshop, I have to constantly remind people. And I've had a, a younger gal take a, a class, I think she was 12 or 13. And I'm like, look, I said, I would have loved to have been doing what you're doing right now as a 12, 13 year old. And you know, her grandma brought her, I think I'm like, I would have loved for to go to a workshop. I said, but look, I've done hundreds, hundreds. And, and like I said, probably over a thousand pet portraits to get to, to be able to just to speak fluently with y'all about how to paint this, you know, and they get frustrated why it doesn't look like mine. I'm like, don't, oh, that's another thing. Don't compare. Don't say, well, it doesn't look as good as yours well, guess what? I could never paint like my dad did. He did barns right. and landscapes. And when I did try to paint like him in high school, that's why I didn't do watercolor. That was the moment I decided I'm not painting watercolor. I don't like it because it didn't look like his. Mm -hmm. It's not that I couldn't, uh, good morning, Co Coco and Jack. I've actually done a room illustration for them. Um, anyway, so that's exciting. Uh, yeah. So just, don't, I guess, I guess in my history, don't get caught up in saying, because I, fo I follow some amazing artists, I think in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could paint like them. Okay, okay, well stop, stop the mentality. I can paint like them. I just don't, because I don't have time. But not to get in that comparison game. It's yeah. just let it go. Because obviously I'm doing wonderful things with, with what I found in with watercolor. Not that I wanted to paint landscapes and barns, but when I tried it, I think it was rocks and trees. I have the painting somewhere. I'm going to do a post about it, but it just is the most awkward looking thing. And I was like, I don't like watercolor, but fortunately I learned, my dad did demonstrations in, in high schools when, you know, mm -hmm. when I was in high school. And so I'd go with him and I know some of those demonstrations that he gave. And so I'm like, I know how to do skies because that was one of the things he taught. So that, that translates into my home illustrations is how to do a really pretty sky effect. And I'll do a class on that too. There's other things in my mind that I'm just like, I'm sure people, we've only, I've only tapped into one small fraction yeah. of an audience. Yeah. But so. I love, I like it when things are super specific because like you'll have a video that's only about how to do eyes and yes. you, someone could spend 10,000 hours just doing that. I mean. <laughs> You are absolutely right. And every single dog is different. And and I'll say it over and over again. How, what do I say? It's so special. Like the eyes are the, the anchor of the, the painting. Yeah. I mean, cause it could, this could, I, this could be any chocolate lab, my but eyes it's are Lucy. Very, like <laughs> highlight heavy, but I, but that's kind of like yeah. what 
I like. And like, even when yes. I'm editing photos in Photoshop, I always okay. put the highlights. I always go I in and edit it. them up in Photoshop and do stuff to the eyes. Like that's just my style and that's just what I like. So like, and see, they're, you're, you're already ahead. Yeah, I can see that they're a little bit poppy, <laughs> but no, like it's it. good. I like it. You already have a, um, you're ahead of the game because you're already, you've already been studying her eyes through Photoshop. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. huge. Like I, if you can start to recognize, like you just said, I like the eyes this way. Okay. Yeah. That's your thing going forward. That's what you do. And that's, what's going to make your art. If you continue to just keep, you know, experimenting with different dogs, like you said, maybe painting Bert and then going on. And I know you've got some, some products out there and I'm sure you're probably wanting to do more in the future. Yeah. All you can do is take these and just get better and better at it, but you're going to take your own spin on it. You're right. not just going to say, well, I want to paint just like Mary Evelyn, or I want to paint just like so-and-so it's right. no, how does Tori paint? And then eventually we will recognize that style. Cause there's, I'll scroll through Instagram and there's definitely, I've gotten familiar with artists. I'm like, Oh, that's so-and-so without even looking at the name mm -hmm. because yeah. they're just such a distinct uh, yeah, style. So, like, so you want it to look like the dog, but also mm -hmm. you can have your own style and your mm -hmm. own touch. You know, I've, I have a lot of dog art in my house and it's all different, but like it all looks like Lucy or Bert. Well, you have, okay. So I just need to do a little quick plug. If I can remember her name, uh, it's Vicky Lou art. I think is her. It's right you here. Have, you have a piece. Yeah. I wish, I wish I'd thought for her to jump on. It's right here. So she is one of those artists that I just, I follow and where we've interacted where I would say we're IG friends. Oh, her work just blows my mind. It's like, so different and I'm, than yours. Like, see, uh, this is a picture of Lucy that she did. This yeah. is a picture of Lucy that you've done. Um, right. They're so different, but. Um, exactly. And we're using like very, right. And yeah. we're using very similar tools. Sim you know, high quality paper. We use very mm -hmm. similar paints because we'll both chat about, oh, I just ordered this color or I just ordered this color. And she started adding embroidery. Did you, you've seen this? Have you seen yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like just. And I've seen other people. There's so many great artists on TikTok as well. Um, and I need to get better at TikTok. <laughs> I, I'm a st I'm just like a lurker. I, I watch I okay. like a lot of videos. Um, okay. But there are a lot of artists who I've seen, um, to, like with a canvas, um, and they they like embroider half of a face and then they paint the other mm. half or something. Oh it's really cool. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I haven't seen see, it I just, the dog yet. <laughs> I've I've got some paints coming in. I think they should be here today. It's I I do not know how to pronounce her name. She's on Instagram. I think it's like Yuli or something, but it starts with an I. But she has holographic watercolors. I think her audience is calligraphy people, like yeah. you know calligraphy. Yeah. But they're watercolors. She makes she hand makes all these watercolors, and so I ordered some because I I've been following her for a while, and I'm like. I just have to figure out how to incorporate holographic or color shifting. Like, you know, when you tip yes. the color and it changes, that's yes. what she has. And so I ordered some and I'm like, okay, we have to figure out now whether it just be minis saying, Hey, yeah. you have, you now have the option to order a metallic background or something, or but like, I want to, what if you did, what if you had like a portrait of a dog and then you did a wash over top of it that was like right. hologram. And I want to do a whole pet portrait in her paints. Like I just want to get whatever colors I need and just do the whole portrait and then just let it sparkle. Yes. That's I mean, how fabulous, how fabulous would that be? And I may need to just talk to her and be like, here's the basis of the colors that I would need for it. Can you like, yeah. can not necessarily like sponsor, but like, can you, yeah. Can you yeah. like send me dots of each of those colors and then I can do an entire painting and say, Hey, it was, you know, done with these paints, which I'm going to do anyway, but I'm like, I don't remember what colors I ordered now. So <laughs> I've got to see, see what happens, but well, stuff like I that. Like, think it's fun sometimes to do like different color, totally different colors. Like when I first did this, um, live mm -hmm. video a month ago, I told people like, if you don't have the exact colors of your dogs, paint your dog purple. Exactly. Like it doesn't matter. It's all about like yeah. the light and the dark, as long as you can get like different values of that color 
you can do mm-hmm. green or purple or blue. Like right. you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I've done Thea in um, it's up. I can see it, but it's far away. Um, Copic markers in blues, like yeah. all blues. So yeah, that so was it's one of those things. I did a dog mom, um, like paint your dog night. I guess last summer or sometime when we were allowed to be with people. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah. <laughs> and it was at like a like a paint and sip kind of place mm-hmm. and my, that my friend owns and so they um they sketched the dogs out for us first and then like kind of coached us on how to paint them all in and everything but one of my favorite ones someone had a white dog and they're like well how do i paint a white dog it's like it's gonna be like all white <laughs> and so they actually did yeah. like a pink tint like the, everywhere where the dog yep. would have like a shadow it was like a pink tint and it just turned out like so magical and beautiful right Exactly. Yeah, you you got it exactly right. And I'll do a white dog at some point. But you're right. You could they could have taken it with blue tones. They could have taken it with yeah. purple tones. Any any color. And really so I, I love that. Yeah, you recognize that. And so yeah, that's really neat. Sorry, we I went way. Yeah, we got. We got I know. Talking about. We've been talking for like an hour. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but that's okay. Um. Okay, so I think I'll say goodbye to everybody again. If you do, if you have any questions, DM us. Um, yeah. If you reply to this after it's been shared in stories, then um, it'll go to uh, to one of us. Um, and there's a link in your bio to sign up for the class. Yes, I believe so. Or I'll make sure. I'll make sure it's there. I think if there it's is. not there already. Yeah. Is there? Okay. I keep. Yeah. I forget to change it. So. I know what's I happening. Do. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Tori. I don't, I just, you know, I just paint and go to Zumba. That's all I do. I don't know what's going on anymore. (laughs) So, oh my goodness. But anyway, okay. Well, thank you for taking time to chat. So yeah, this was was so fun. I really appreciate it. it. So um, I will see you. I'll talk to you later. Yes. Talk to you later. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching.